Alright, so I'm going to just show you how I'm going to unsolder this castle pin to put a QS8 connector pin on. Um, one of the issues I was having with these pins is just not fully seat into a QS8 connector if you're going to be running them um, into QS8 connector. As you can see, I got this QS8 jumper already made. This goes all the way in. This is a castle 8mm bullet compared to a QS8. So this is a maiden surface that's going into the QS8. Um, so you can see it's probably about two millimeters shorter. So what I'm gonna do today is just unsolder this to put a QS8 connector on. And if you don't know how to take this apart already, this is how the QS8 connector starts with the male bullets. You're gonna have to either cut this away or hammer this out. What I normally do is cut it away um, and then I cut a slot right here, a slot right here. Then you can take some pliers, pull this pin out. And then that's going to expose the QS8 connector. And then there you go, got the QS8 bullet. Do the same thing on this side. And on this QS8 connector, it's just a pin um, or like a slot with this red that's filled that's keeping this connector to the bullet so as you can see that's all that's locking that in on the male side it does have a 5.0 or 5.1 ohm resistor so when you plug this in it doesn't spark that's why they're called anti-spark connector I'll go over that in another video um, just this video I'm gonna show you just how to disconnect take off a bad connector and put a new connector on Let me just heat this bullet up nice and hot to try to get the solder melted. And then a good rule of thumb, if you're going to uh, pretty much try to desolder something, uh, sometimes it's good to add solder back to what you're working on. Um, and in that case, it's gonna pretty much get that solder to melt. So let's do that here. And as you can see, I got that connector off. Clean my tip. And then next, what we're gonna do is get the um, QS8 connector ready. Um, what I normally like to do is preheat this as well, get that solder flowing. So this wire is already pre tinned since we just desoldered it. Um,
now that that's cooled down I'm gonna just take this wire re-angle it and add some more solder So it's pretty much done on that. Um, got the solder wicked in there. The wire is pretty much cooling off. In the meantime, you do got to be careful. This is going to be pretty hot. So let's get this out the way. And right here, I got 10 mil heat shrink. Uh, depending on what size you're working with, you want to go a little bit big, bigger. This is a three to one heat shrink. So. 10 millimeters is pretty much two millimeters bigger than our connector and don't want to go too big all right so as you can see this wire connector pretty good still a little hot so you do got to be careful when working on stuff that's hot so next I'll show you how to heat the shrink or put the heat shrink on and go from there so one thing to keep in mind if you're going to be cutting heat shrink is you do want to squeeze it out so that it's nice and straight so when you go to make your cut um, you get an even line so as you can see right here it's a little bit off so if you wanted to get it perfect squeeze it get the flat surface since you're trying to cut a circle and then you'll be good slide it over this uh, QSA connector one thing you have to keep in mind is on this connector is where it's going to go into the housing so on the male side of that connector uh, to female side it is going to be different so if we wanted to plug this in to our female side with our positive on the connector I'll have a red stripe inside I would press that in as you can see that's how much of the connector is inside so you do want to apply the heat shrink right about to that housing I'm going to just take a, a basic lighter don't want to go too hot To get that started slide that over And there you have it, QSA connector on the Castle uh, XLX2. So as you can tell, this wire is now bigger versus the Castle 8mm bullet. And I'll go over soldering on another video, but pretty much when you get an XLX2 from the factory, this is how it is. You do have to solder whatever connector you want on. Castle does recommend QSAs on their, their uh, ESCs due to the amps that you'll be pulling. This ESC is pretty strong, so you don't want to have a little small connector on it and not get enough power. What happens is with electronics is if you're not getting enough power, 
things start to go wrong. Um, so you do want to use appropriate connectors. I do have um, this setup that is going to be built later on that I'll go over how to solder this in another video. Today I just want to show you a brief setup on how to put QS8 connectors on an ESC and then go from there. So as you can tell, it's not that bad. Just due to the depth of how far this connector goes into, it is ideal to run QS8 connectors if you're going to be running this setup with QS8 connectors and you're not going to be running a QS8 connector on here. It's just to TD up the space um, and then go from there. So do whatever you want. Have fun, like, subscribe, share. Enjoy your day.